Hey, how are you doing, guys? We've got an Hello. ACOM aneurysm, so I'm going to hand it over to Christina to present the case, and then we'll run through what we've done so far. All right, so this is a 69-year-old lady with a past medical history of hypertension um, who presented with headaches, and on a workup for that, an MRA showed an ACOM aneurysm. Uh, on further investigation, she did have knowledge of this aneurysm, which was initially seen seven years prior uh, and managed conservatively at the time, but she was later lost the follow-up. This is the MRA showing um, an ACOM pointing off towards the right side. This is her diagnostic angiogram, which we did recently. And here are some measurements. Um, I think the maximal diameter of the aneurysm was almost six uh, millimeters in a diagonal um, with a wide neck, almost one-to-one -one ratio to the dome. And as you can see, the aneurysm is located at the junction of the right A1 and A2. Here are some of the 3D recons. Okay. So, you know, for these kind of aneurysms, there's obviously a range of treatment modalities that you can use between clipping and endovascular. Obviously, most of the aneurysms or all of the aneurysms, unless they're incredibly straightforward in its terms as patient selection will go to our CVC, which is a multidisciplinary meeting. This was reviewed and it could be treated either with clipping or endovascular means. And we've decided to go ahead with endovascular stent assisted coiling. For these kind of aneurysms that are broad necked, you really need some kind of assistance. Uh, in a ruptured aneurysm that looks like this, you could definitely try uh, balloon assisted coiling with a conglomerate mass technique to try and get a tight packing of the coils. But we, we have more options uh, considering it's unruptured and we can have her on dual antiplatelets. So I got the axis from the right radial artery. So this one is a radial artery. So I brought up the six inch benchmark catheter over the Simmons Select 135 centimeter um, catheter. And the wire is a glide wire all the way up to the origin of the subclavian, close to the subclavian artery origin. I took the roadmap of the subclavian artery and uh, that shows the common right side common carotid artery as well. I use a glide wire and um, fortunately, was direct, I was able to directly select the common carotid artery without using the shape of the Simmons catheter. Uh, the wire went up straight to the right common carotid artery. So I, oh, advanced the Simmons catheter along the wire and this is a common carotid artery injection to show the uh, bifurcation of the carotid artery, showing external and internal. And using this as a roadmap, I advanced the 035-038 wire again all the way to the petrous segment of the right internal carotid artery and along this, over this uh, wire, I advanced a benchmark so, I mean, um, ideally, we'd like to have the guide catheter up to that horizontal petrous segment, but you can see by the angulation, it's it's a bit of an acute kickback turn, and these this catheter specifically is a little bit too rigid at the tip to make it around that corner safely. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we still have a lot of support. You can see that there's a change from the roadmap to the alignment of the benchmark as it is. So, it's well opposed to the outer curves, and there's no spasm. We checked that as well. So, this is pretty stable. And we took the baseline... AP and lateral uh, right ICA injection of the head, showing the ACOM aneurysm in the midline. That's really nice. You can see flash filling through the ACOM to the left hemispheric circulation. So we know that there's good inflow from the contralateral A1. 
it's important to know that when you're planning to stand or reconstruct these ACOM constructs because you want to make sure that you keep open obviously all branches that are essential. So right about now, Tomo is about to go up and catheterize the, the arteries for the stent and then the aneurysm. Okay, so let's go with the straight micro, straight SL10 with a synchro 2 standard in it. The range of neuro balloons for treating these kind of bifurcation aneurysms are really great. They're quite useful. I mean, I heard Sabine yeah. talking about transform which is, it's a nice balloon, it goes up and down really, really quickly, but, you know, we're lucky that there are some new balloons becoming available from other, other industry representatives like Bolt that have similar kind of rapid infl uh, inflation and deflation and are quite navigable. Mm. So Tomo's got the microwire going from the ICA. It's taken a loop to the, mm -hmm. to the midline, which is the A1. And then on the lateral, it's traveling north yeah. into the A2. So he's, he's crossed into the A2 circulation. He needs to get his microcatheter up there to drop the stent. He's trying to get the wire to track around the pericolosal A2, the largest vessel. And like everything in intervention, it's all about support. So this patient's been pre-medicated with aspirin and plavix and had their cumulative bolus of 5,000 of heparin. So even with these very um, small microcatheters and thin navigable micro guidewires, you can see some movement and, and traction on the intracranial vasculature, how it's not matching the roadmap anymore. Probably this is a good enough. Yeah, it's probably enough. Is it off? Do you want to do a run or roadmap? Roadmap. For now. Mm -hmm. there you go. Once I get the microcatheter, I'll do the run. Into. Hmm. Okay. Right, so next is to get the coiling microcatheter into the aneurysm and then jail a coil partially deployed with a stent. The maximum of the aneurysm was measured like around six millimeters, but the most component bulging laterally is 3.6 uh, to 8 millimeters. And if we cover the neck nicely with the stent, uh, 3D shaped, three millimeters coils gonna fill that uh, component nicely. We may not be able to completely close the neck, uh, but if you use target 360 coils, um, it expands a little bit to f find the space and fit the wall and fill up the rest of the space, uh, the, fill up the uh, aneurysm nicely, I think. So I'm thinking 3D shaped coil from striker, detachable coil, electric detachable coil. What wire are you guys using? Hmm. This is synchro to standard. Hmm. So, yeah, it's a, it's a workhorse wire. It's yeah, only been it usually around for holds a long shape time, well. but, um, it works well. Yeah. Um, so that's that's pretty spectacular technique. It's it's a hard move to go into a sidewall bifurcation aneurysm that's that small. Usually, when you're catheterizing, sorry, catheterizing these aneurysms, if they're larger, you just kind of want to be two thirds of the way in. But for these small aneurysms, it's better to be right at the neck. But it's not always possible with the morphology that you mm -hmm. have. Yeah. So for these intracranial aneurysms, there's an adage: it's always the the first loop and the last loop. First loop of the first coil, last loop of the last coil, which are the dangerous and tricky ones. We have three types of intracranial stent. Uh, Obviously, open cell stent, closed cell stent, and we have bladed stent as well. Less bladed uh, aneurysm 
as assisting stent and the flow diverter or the blading stent. But um, this is this uh, angle from A1 to A2. It's pretty sharp and I want the stent to fit this morphology very nicely. And for that, I think the open cell stent is the best choice for this. And for the open cell stent, we have uh, Atlas Neuroform stent from Stryker. And the Neuroform Atlas Ariel. is much less metal with a good support. And I think that's the uh, best stent for the aneurysm. Three millimeter stent and the length 21 millimeter should be the should be long enough. Are we good to check back in in room one? This is the run I'm showing is the run right after placing the microcatheter into the aneurysm. Through the microcatheter in the pericarpal artery, I brought up the atlas stent, I, the, exactly the one I explained before. This is the open cell stent, so you just have to confirm the lateral positioning. Once you determine the distal, it just open up where it has to. This is the run. Oops. This is the run math right after deploying the stent. You see this, so this stent has three markers on either side. You see the distal marker in the right A2. And if you see the AP, you see the A1 longer, so you'll see the, the proximal part in the A1 nicely. So it's the, the stent is placed covering the aneurysm neck. And this is the first coil coming out. So as Dr. DeLacy was mentioning, um, the microcatheter is pointing towards the tip of the aneurysm against the wall. So I, had, I took out the energy, I pull back the microcatheter, and then deploy, start deploy the, uh, uh, the coil. It came out nicely. This is a run after the first uh, first coil. It looks very nice for now. So actually, the microcatheter came back. Even the 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 aneurysm doesn't look like real packed. Seeing the live images, like uh, no, sorry, this one. It's not. It's not that dense yet. Um, I push the microcatheter in a little bit more. I'm gonna do the run to make sure that coils are in the aneurysm. Looking good. You see, still, you still see the contrast filling into the aneurysm. Today, all of the devices I'm using is behaving very nice. <laughs> They know they're on camera. The, <laughs> the stent, the size of the stent, it looks like it was the right size. The size of the first framing coil, I think it was good. What I like, um, usually this um, Neuroform Atlas stent, I think the, because it has less metal, the support or the gap be between the metals are relatively large and the coils are easily coming, comes out of the aneurysm or comes into the stent. And this didn't happen to me today. Okay, I think this is gonna be the last coil. He's mad. So you That's see it. right next to the, the coil, you see the tip of the microcatheter. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the microcatheter came out of the aneurysm. So this is the last coil. This is going to be the last coil. And this is, okay, the final run.
Very nice. Looking good. I think that's about it for me. 